So Radiance Films is, uh, I'm not going to tell you about Radiance Films every time I talk about Radiance Films because I tell you about Radiance Films every time I talk about Radiance Films. Radiance Films, last time I'll say it for a little while, is uh, Radiance Films, I did it again, is a company that puts out really interesting European, mostly European and international films on Blu-ray with a really criterion level or arrow level treatment. And the latest is The Iron Prefect from 1977. This is an Italian film based on a true story with uh, Giuliano Gemma and Claudia Cardinale and directed by Pasquale, I'm reading it from a distance, Squitieri. I try. And uh, it's a very good film. This is a very good film. It is an Italian crime, let's say a crime drama, historical crime drama. It is set, I believe could be wrong, in the 1920s in Italy. And uh, Mussolini, who is still on his rise to power there, has appointed this, uh, the titular Iron Prefect, who uh, is set out to Palermo, Sicily, to try to just eradicate the mafia, or at least remove the mafia from everyday life there because they have a stranglehold on businesses and communities and they're killing people and exercising their muscle and it's just miserable and the government wants to the government wants to be the one <laughs> to, to to oppress the people not the mafia uh and it's just it's a really really well-made film going in i didn't know if this was going to be like an action movie or what it's much more drama than action but it does have action elements in it Gemma is great he's mostly known for being in a lot of spaghetti westerns the ringo spaghetti not to nothing to do with the beatles but the ringo spaghetti westerns that were done uh, in italy in the, in the 60s into the 70s and here he's very understated very strong presence. Interestingly, I learned in the extras, the person they originally wanted in this film was Burt Lancaster, but he wasn't, he had a health problem, he couldn't do it. And watching the movie, I'm like, yeah, I could have seen Burt Lancaster in this film. Um, so basically it's him going from town to town with uh, government soldiers trying to eradicate the, the bandits that were holding people hostage. Holding people hostage sometimes literally, but mostly in terms of you know, we need you to work in our fields and we're gonna pay you little to nothing. And if you don't wanna do that, maybe we'll kill some of your people. Maybe we'll kill some of your farm animals. Maybe we'll have our way with your women. Maybe we'll do things you really don't want us to do. So maybe you should just do what we say. So it's a lot of that going on. Very rural, gorgeous looking film. Gorgeous landscapes, uh, really lush interiors and exteriors. Uh, interiors of, you know, sometimes it's, you know, at one point Gemma says to somebody, well, step into my office. And it's like this gigantic, gorgeous gold leaf office. Uh, but other times you're just in, in households and buildings and alleyways, but it's just, it's all fascinating to me, uh, not being from there and not having lived there in the twenties or the late seventies when this was shot. And uh, Claudia Canarelli is great. She's always great, but she's just cool to see in this as a, a villager in one of these towns that's sort of run by the mafia who really doesn't want government handouts and really doesn't want the government's help for the most part. And, you know, we, we take care of our own, things are fine, we don't need you rolling in here with your horses and your soldiers telling us how life should be. And uh, that's part of it. her struggle bet between her and Gemma is is him trying to do what's what he thinks is best for the people and her feeling like, you know, we're okay with how things are. Um, some violence, nothing really gory, but there's some violence here and there. The set piece that I most took away, and I just watched this last night, so this is pretty fresh in my mind. Um, there's this set piece where Gemma and the soldiers go to this town to root out these bandits and these mafia people, and they know that there's a system of tunnels in the houses and under the houses, and it's this huge stone, uh, I lack the proper architectural terminology, but it's this huge city that's built on a hill with really old buildings and, and walkways, and it's all this sort of like stonework and masonry and things. And they go into a house and they basically, he just takes, a, he picks up something off the ground in this house and he starts knocking on the wall till he hears a hollow point. And he, no, he had a pickaxe. He's like, we don't need a gun, we need a pickaxe. And he he opens the wall and it's open and there's this gigantic system of like rooms and tunnels under under the the uh, town that they have to get all the bad guys out of. And they smoke them out, they shoot them out, they do all kinds of stuff. It was just a really impressive set piece and a uh, very compelling film, really, really good movie. About 118 minutes, I believe, so not brief. There were times where it, it lulled a little bit, but really, really a quality film here with the Iron Prefect. So, extras. Not a ton, not voluminous, but that's okay. We have a vintage, while I look, 
over, I, I really need to be better at having a teleprompter or something. We have uh, the director and the star discussing the film from 2009, and that's 35 minutes. Then we have the biographer of the director discussing uh, the director and the making of the film, that's 40 minutes. Then we have Alex Cox, British director Alex Cox, best known probably for Repo Man and uh, what, Straight to Hell and Sid and Nancy and a bunch of other things and a huge fan of spaghetti westerns and Italian movies. He talks about the film, they, they list it as an appreciation. He talks about the film for, uh, it's like 10 minutes, 11 minutes, and he's just funny and fascinating and has stories about running into Gemma and all kinds of other things. And it's really, it's just him, it's like this, it's him in his house uh, with cooler stuff behind him than me. And uh, he just talks about how much he loves these films and these, these the actors and the director. And it's just, it's, it's a very loving off the cuff tribute that was really interestingly done. So let me give you a little look at the package. Radiance has a, a sort of a standard look to their packaging where they have this uh, Japanese style obi strip that goes around. And that's actually, if you open this up, it's removable. So if you don't want that there to obscure the cover art, you don't need it there, but. So it's nice uh, clear case. You crack it open and it's got uh, a pretty hefty book about the film. I mean, if you, can you see that? Can you see that? So pretty hefty book about the film with writing on it. And then you have a reversible cover with uh, the Italian title. And uh, the back, it's, it is in English on either side, but it's just the, you get the Italian title versus uh, an English title. Uh, this is a really good film. Did I mention how gorgeous the transfer on this is? The transfer looks uh, filmed from 1977, so you're creeping up on 50 years old for this film. It does not look old at all. It looks like it was shot yesterday. Uh, and it always seems weird to say, but skin tones are perfect. Uh, the landscapes look amazing. It's just, it's a gorgeous movie. And it's not even like bright colors gorgeous. It's just the locations and the style of uh, the attire of the day. I mean, Gemma's going into towns to, to bust mafia and bust bandits, and he's still a rather well-dressed dude when he's doing it. So I really enjoyed this. Uh, available now on Blu-ray from Radiance Films, 1977's The Iron Prefect.